Amen. Our dear Father, once again, we thank you for your kindness. We thank you for this new month of October. This is the first Sunday in it. We are grateful for all of your messages we have enjoyed as individuals, as families, as a church family. We are grateful for all the advancements we made. We are grateful. We declare in accordance with Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 8 that better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof that this year will end better for everyone under the sound of a voice. We give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise the Lord. Please, you can have your seats. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. So, I will talk, you know, this will be and you can feel free to share with your friends on social media. You can feel free to share on social media. You can feel free to post as we <clears throat> share on Twitter. You can feel free to post and all of that. So in this service, it's a, this is a family month. In the first, second and third service, I specifically spoke to people around that were people that were married and people that were in relationships. In this fourth service, I would love to speak to people that are single. I would also make some, you know, push for people that are married so that you don't feel left out. All right. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 13. And I want to talk about here overcoming relationship frustration. Proverbs chapter 13 in verse 12. Proverbs chapter 13 in verse 12. One of the things I want to deal with today would be negative mindsets and emotions that single people have that ultimately affects them. You know, I don't know, there was a video I posted on social media where a lady from the US began to share a testimony about how my meeting with her changed her life and all of those kind of things. One of the major things is this. Let me tell you something. When people are in a better emotional state they come up with more creative solutions to their challenges. When they're in a better emotional state, I'll give an example. Have you ever gone into a room before and you're looking for something that is there and you didn't find it? And you came out. Then when you were better, you went inside and found it. What was the difference? It was really the state you were in. Maybe the first day you were in, you were angry, you were frustrated, and your anger and frustration did not allow you to see. Your eyes were still working. But your emotions overwhelmed you in such a way that you could not see. But when you got into a more stable state, a more joyful state, you went to the same place, and what you did not see, you began to see. That tells you that the problem was never with, the problem was never with the thing. The problem was never with your body. It was your emotional state that determined what you saw. So what does that mean here? When you are single and you are in a negative emotional state, negativity will come, not because you did something wrong. You are in a negative emotional state. And when you are in a positive emotional state, it also comes that way. So I will say something. A lot of you know exactly what to do. Why are you not doing it? You are not doing it because of the state you are in. And after today's teaching now, for the first one, two, three days, you can be excited. By the time it's Thursday, if your state has not changed permanently, you go back to where you were originally. That's one of the things I tell people is that they should write little calculations and for 21 days, they should be saying it. You know why? 21 days, can, 21 days confession can change a state permanently. That's why I keep telling them to do that. All right, so we're going to look at this now. All right, are we ready? The Bible says, hope deferred, make it the heart sick. So what does that mean? There's an experience on the outside that affects inside. That's where I'm going to. Because when I'm talking about emotional state, emotional state is not something you can see on someone's face like that. You can see the state, you can see the facial expression, but it's not something you can really see that way. So see what the Bible says. The Bible says, hope deferred. Please, quick announcement. I made a mistake. Uh, not a mistake, something I didn't mention, I want to mention. After this service, I need about 
40 people who want to have games after the services. So I need about 40 people that can help us organize, create games, because since most of you are single, there's no reason for you to teach us and go away when your husband can be here with you in church. Praise God. So all of these guys that are wearing nice abada and having nice goatee, you know, we would like to get your number and to get to know you. It may be you, it may not be you, but can we get to know you first? Charity begins where? At home. Praise God. So now I've made the announcement, at least that 40 group, I want 20 guys to be there. All of you guys are wearing cap in church today. Make sure you are there. Yeah. All of you, just, if you're just wearing cap, I've nominated you. Praise God. If you're wearing glasses, I've nominated you. Praise God. All of you are wearing cap and glasses, I've nominated you instantly. So we can. The reason why is that when you ask that kind of thing, then the ladies will come and fill the whole place. Then the guys. So after service, we will have a group of 40. Some of you will bring food. Some of you will bring Ludo. So they love creative games. So after service, we'll be mingling with each other and getting to know each other. There's no point to be going to Zazu and Queen also be looking for who to marry. You know, they are in the house of the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Then the second thing is that I'm going to mention it in my teaching. In my teaching. Praise God. One of the most strategic things you can do is to be taking pictures in church and posting. Yeah. The reason why is that church people go to church pictures. One, there's a lady that works with me. She's engaged to someone. She's dating someone in the UK right now. How did they find that? She took a picture. We posted it. And someone in the UK saw it and said, ah, the guy is a church member online in the UK. There's no church where he is. He watches online. He said, asking people, where's this lady? Good enough for her. Someone had commented and tagged her. Found her. Check the other pictures. I like this guy. They said talking. Now they're in a relationship. Last I checked, they had seen each other. They had traveled up and down, seen each other, that kind of thing. Uh, one of the things I'm going to say is that singles, the new, on, the new way of meeting people is 70% online, 30% on site. So you must be very deliberate and intentional about your online image. You can't be putting up all this thing where you have breasts showing up and down. They will not know that you are playing. They will think that's how you are. Maybe that's how you are. I don't know. Ah. Praise God. So you'll be very discreet. And if you, and you're not, going, you know, all your pictures, there's no picture that, every picture tells a story. Then they put pictures up that shows what you want to have. Uh -huh. So all your pictures, put pictures up. Wow, just making pancakes right now. Ah, she cooks. Mmm. Ah. Because all your picture, you are eating here, you are eating there, you are eating here. The guy said, if I did this girl, hey. Because all pictures are communicating what? Something. I'm not saying there's something wrong with the picture. But if that's what you don't want to communicate, don't communicate it. Praise the Lord. I'm a very kind, good pastor. I love to tell the truth. I'm telling you, I, I, love to, I love to. All right. Praise God. So let's go back to the teaching. Are we ready? All right. So the Bible says, Hope the fat, make it the heart sick. So when it says, Hope the fat, what it literally means that there's an external experience you have that begins to affect the state of your heart. And see, it says, hope the fat maketh the heart sick. And the problem is that once the heart is sick, what happens? Because the heart is sick, everything that grows out of the heart becomes sick also. So one of the things you have to do, and you know, and I do this often, when it comes to the issues of life and relationship, the first place you have to treat, two fundamental places, you have to treat the emotion and you have to treat what? The mindset. The reason why I'm saying so is that a lot of you know you have to leave that person that is making you sad. But the mindset is keeping you there. For example, when I was reading somewhere and they said that they were, I was reading how animals choose their mates, their, their sexual partners or their family intelligently. The only person that says that does not choose intelligently are human beings. A man will be beating you and say, but I love him. Animals would be checking. Does the man do this? I was, it was the ego I was hearing about. 
I heard that one of the things the ego normally do to find the male ego is that the ego would drop something and see if the male ego can dive to get it. To show that if the eagle is having children at a very high height of tree and one of the eggs falls down, can the male eagle save it? So the question is this, and this is a question. Why do people see danger and go for it? Most of the time, it's an emotional state they are in or it's a mentality they have. Someone says that, well, I've been dating. Um, someone says, well, what do they call it? Um, I keep attracting this kind of people to date. The reason why you keep attracting those kind of people to date is simple. There's a mindset you have that keeps attracting. There's something about them that you see, that you notice. Let me tell you. <laughs> you know, when you want to say some things, you want to break it down. People don't just walk into your life, you attract them. So when you see yourself, especially when you notice you're attracting consistent things, Leave the attraction and look inside and say, what is inside me that is attracting these people? Because the truth that there's something inside. And see what it says here. And that's what I'm very powerful here. He says, hope deferred. It says, when you have a physical experience, more than the fact that your heart was broken, more than the fact that you had a divorce, he said, that's the smaller thing. What you want to take note is the impact it makes on your heart. He said, hope the fat makes the heart sick. And the challenge is that once the heart is sick, what the heart begins to produce is sickness. So one of the things we have to do for all of us as single is to be able to go inside and say, hey, what emotions do we have? What mindset do we have that reproduces all these things in the physical? Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. Why is it important to overcome and to change negative emotions and mindset? Number one, you attract who you are by time. There's nothing you can do. See, everybody, let me say it this way. Everybody is a living magnet. You attract who you are by time. Everybody's a living magnet. You attract who you are by time. I'll give an example. A lady came to me and it was a Zoom meeting I had. And, you know, a lady said to me that I don't know why I'm attracted to older men. He says, I don't know why. He said, younger men don't ever find me attractive. It's older people that find attractive. She was saying that people don't, younger men don't find her attractive. But it's older people that find her attractive. Of course, I knew it doesn't work that way. I knew that there's something that she's putting out on the inside. And when I say there's something she's putting out, it's first in the mental realm and in the emotions. So I began to ask that question. I knew what it could be. I said to her, I said, tell me about your father. He said, I was never really close to my father. It was a relationship I never had. I said, I got it. What did I get? What I got was this. Subconsciously, not in a conscious level. I hope you know that you're thinking I in both the conscious and subconscious level. Yes or no? Subconsciously, she was looking for a father. And that's what she was collecting. She, so every time she saw this man, she was actually was looking for her father. That's what she was looking for. All of you here that have not dated and you want to date in three years, I will tell you for free why you have not dated. The reason why you have not dated is that in your emotional space, something is occupying it. It can be someone that is not saying yes or no that is there. Number two, it can be someone that hurts you that is there. Number three, it can be someone that you are hoping to be there that is not there. All of them are occupying that space. Number four, it can be a heartbreak you had that the pain is there. The guy has gone, but the pain is there. And you can be single and you are emotionally not available. So, when your emotions are not available, the person cannot connect. You are there, but your emotions are not there. It's like a phone that has no power. The phone is there, but you can't receive call. So, you are there, but you can't receive signal that people like you. The reason why is that your emotional power is out or disconnected or engaged with somebody else. Who knows what I'm talking about? Most times when I talk to single girls that are about 40 years old, this is single girls. I'm not sure if it applies to the guy, but I know to the girls. One of the things they say to me consistently, what I notice is that, one of them I notice is that they were in a relationship 
that was going nowhere and they stayed there for a long time. That's how they became single. Who, can, who, who has a story, maybe yourself, somebody else, that can help me with this? Anybody here? There's going to be someone that has a story. That, you, know, they can, you can deny it, you can say you don't know, it doesn't matter. There's one that has a story. Either it's your story or somebody else. Anybody that has a story that I, I want to hear a story. I also want to share a practical story. Yeah. Hands up, please. Yeah, give her a microphone. I know there's a really story. Yeah, tell me about it. No, you can sit down, please. Okay. So I don't have to lie. Okay. I was dating this guy. Okay. I was dating this guy. When we were dating, when we met, he told me he had a baby mama. And uh, he has two baby mamas. So the first one is going to Nigeria. Please, can you keep your comment to yourself? <laughs> you will not comment. Someone is commenting. You are saying, ah. Yeah, please go ahead. Is he still in your life? Okay. So, why is this? I love your honesty. Listen to me, lady. Don't be concerned about them. They are just, some of them are hypocrites. They are doing the same thing. <laughs> what I want to ask you is this. Do you really think you'll find another love with him in your life? So why are you there? Well, he's still blackmailing me. Like, he don't just want me to leave. He's threatening me. No, it's not threatening, no. I will tell you why you are there. Everybody is there because he's meeting certain needs in your life, not because of the blackmail. So maybe it's financial. Yeah, it could be financial. It could be emotional. Emotional. Yeah. Let me tell you something there. Eh? You cannot feel what's already filled. If he has filled his space in your life, you will never get filled again because that space has been filled. Only that that feeling there is temporal. What do you think you should do? I really want to leave. So what is stopping you? What fear do you have? I want to ask you a question. If you left last year, would you have started over? Yes, yes. yes or no? Yes. No, use the microphone. Yes. Would you have started over? Yes. yes. If you leave now, will you start over? Yes. If you wait till two years' time, will you start over? Yes. You will. But the later you leave, the worse it is for you. Why not leave now? One of the things that will happen, this is what happens. And the thing is that you just need to process it very well. I'm not saying the fear is not real. So let me, let, let me go deeper for just a minute. I'm, I didn't want to really go deep. I need the microphone. So if you start over, what do you lose? What's the fear? Okay, the fear. What do you, see, let me tell you how you deal with fear. Break fear down. Take by paper and what? Break fear down. What are you afraid of starting over, yeah? Okay, great. 
So the first fear is financial. Why not get a proper job or do a business that can change that fear for you? Tell me. Let me ask you a question. Have you been the person that's taken care of yourself financially since you were young? Or you always had someone take care of you financially? You need to be honest with yourself. Yeah, it's you. The reason why is that a lot of girls, you know what? Girls, guys have a scheme and you need to know it. They begin to take care of you and they paralyze it so that you cannot live. It's a strategy. A wealthy guy told me, he said, when I meet a girl, I take her to a height that if she dares leave me, she can never maintain. So she's stuck. You would think that it's generous. You don't know it's a strategy. Sometimes generosity is a strategy to enslave the person that is receiving help. Yeah. Praise God. I remember this girl. I spoke to her. He said, by the time he dated this guy, the third month, she had never traveled before. The guy flew out to Dubai in a private jet. You know, he says, he said, where do I start from? He said, we landed to Dubai. It was a Rolls Royce that took us all the time I was in Dubai. He said, where do I start from? And you don't understand, that generosity is not that it's kind. It's a method of enslavement. So that if you want to leave, you will be like, where am I going to? Where do I start from? But this is why you need to, you need to know something there. If you stay in that relationship, everybody loves you because you add value. And that person is staying with you because you add value. As your value diminish, they will kick you out. And it will be more painful than what you ever thought. It's better and more honorable that you walked out, that you were chased out and pushed out. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you. Ladies, let me talk to you. Live within your income, not another man's income. You know why? There are relationships that look attractive only because you are broke. When you learn to live in your, within your income, you can walk a way out of rubbish. A lot of you are sticking abuse. A lot of you are sticking damage. Not because of love, but because you've gotten yourself used to a certain financial standard that you cannot cope with. Let me just go into my teaching because if we start this way, the time will evaporate. So the reason why you have to you know, fix your mindset is because number one, you attract who you are. So this is what I mean that you attract who you are. If you are damaged, so, so this is the thing. If you keep attracting the wrong set of partners in your life, it's not about the persons you're attracting. There's something within you that is attracting them. So the first thing you have to do is to look inward and say, why am I attracting this kind of persons? I give an example. I knew someone that told me, he said, all the people I attract never stay for a long time. By the time, you know, we began to talk, I found the reason. The person did not expect them to stay. So it was self-sabotage. He will not totally commit to that relationship. So eventually when they leave, it will say they left. But in retrospect, because he could not commit to them, they could not commit to him, and that relationship broke halfway. The first way you fix relationships is by fixing yourself. And when I say fixing yourself, two areas you have to fix. You have to ask yourself, you need, how do I fix my mentality? You know why? Because your mentality is an operating system like iPhone. All the apps run on it. All your choice, behavior, values, who you stay with is running on an operating system. All of us have operating system on us. When you come to a church like this, it's called version upgrade. We're just removing the bugs. There are some bugs in your system. But some of you, it's no matter of bug. You need to delete your OS and install new OS. Praise God. Three limiting mindsets for women. Number one. Three limiting mindsets. I will come to the guys. Three limiting mindsets for women. Number one. My bitch is all that matters. 
It's a big thing. Someone says, is that a mindset? Sure. Why do you think people are doing BBL? The reason people are doing BBL is that mindset that all that matters the most about my life is what? My beauty. And anywhere you get returns, you invest more there. Yes or no? So when as a young girl, every time they tell you, you are beautiful, people give you favor because you are beautiful, people tell you because you are beautiful, you are beautiful, beautiful, what happens to you? You begin to invest more in your beauty. And that's why sometimes the most beautiful girls have the awkward characters and personalities. And the reason why is that they did not have time to develop other areas because they were overcompensated with beauty. So they kept working on beauty, working on beauty, working on beauty. As they get older, they remove fat. As they get older, they remove stomach because they don't want to look the beauty. But listen to me, everybody. Beauty is a depreciating asset. Did you hear what I said? Beauty is a depreciating asset. No matter the kind of surgery, it will still go after some time. What is an appreciating asset? Personality. Because the more people know you, the sweeter they know you are. And I'm saying this because for some of you, you are not physically beautiful. And that's why no one is dating you. Because you've told yourself that all that matters is physical beauty. And because I'm not physically beautiful, there's a way in your mind you cannot even date yourself. You cannot even tell your brother that hey, you should date all like me. Because in your mind, you've considered that you are not attractive. It's a consideration for you. And let me tell you something, eh? In case you say it or you don't say it, the way you think you are is the way people see you. So there are people that say, you know, I'm not physically beautiful. They don't say it outside though. But inside, that's how they feel about each other. And because that's how you feel about each other, the way it works is that you are going to behave, align, do things that will manifest that kind of thing outwardly. Someone say hallelujah. So the first limiting mindset, the first limiting mindset, the first limiting mindset is that my beauty is all that matters. And, let me, and that's why if you go online now, all the, almost some women post is nakedness. The reason why is that if my beauty is what matters, why did they post nakedness? I posted on my pictures wearing clothes you didn't like. Once I post bikini and pants, I got 50,000 like, well done. I keep posting what? Bikini and pants. You know why? Anywhere there is high return, I invest more. So that's the challenge of you thinking that beauty is everything. Because once you have that mentality, you invest a lot into beauty. And you don't develop, develop your, yourself mentally. And that's why you see people that are beautiful but mentally they are empty. You see guys that have muscles but mentally they are paralyzed. Go to the gym. See guys that are gymnastics, they would almost die in the gym. Have a conversation of economics with them. They have nothing to offer. All they know is the different types of sex. And the reason why is that every time girls see them, my God. Ooh. 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 Hey, this guy. So, because all they compliment is a six pack, they keep walking engine, walking engine, walking engine, walking engine, walking machines. Praise God. Maybe we should not talk. Listen, shape can attract a man, sharpness will keep a man. And I'm saying so because it's two categories. There are the people that are very beautiful and you fall into the trap. You know, you, you, you are very beautiful. You know, so there's a conscious investment. And the people that are not very beautiful and you've let that result into your thick esteem. Let me tell you something then. First of all, beauty is one of the things that guys look at. But beauty is not the only thing. There are attraction that is beyond beauty. One of them is personality, charm. There's a way someone talks that you will not believe their talk will cover for whatever you see on their body. And when you're beautiful, all beauty does in marriage is three to six months. After six months, your partner does not remember you're beautiful again. Because 
We don't live with beauty, we live with personality. Somebody say hallelujah. The second mistake that ladies make, and this is what, so the first mistake that ladies make that, my what? My beauty is my what? Is what? Is all that matters. No, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. Even the Bible says beauty is vain. Why? Because beauty is a depreciating asset. That's why you see some 50-year-old, 60-year-old men, they are trying everything not to lose their beauty. Surgery upon surgery, every time on the surgeon's table. And the reason why is that they know that once the beauty is gone, everything is gone. And either they do surgery or not, the body will age with time. If I were you, I would invest in an, in an asset that appreciates. The second thing is this, and which is very powerful. Women think that they are not enough. For some reason, they think that they are not enough. I'm just laughing because there are some things I can't say. You know, this is going online. I was canceling a guy, and the guy is into big ladies. Younger guy, but into maybe the plus size. And I said, why do you like, why? I mean, he was trying to break free from the addiction. He was doing plus size women, then he began to do gigolo. It became a gigolo. People that date older women. I said, why do you do this? They say, ah, pastor, the biggest people that have the wildest sentence, fantasies are girls that are plus, 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 plus. I said, really? I said, I thought because they were big, they will be restricted sexually. He said, that's the problem. He said, because they are big, they want to do everything to make up that if we are not slim and have figure eight, what figure eight will not give will, will give you. You know what I'm saying that to you? It comes from that thinking that I am not what enough. And when you're not enough, it does two things to you. You try too hard for love. So you, once a guy just say, hi, 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 I like you. You're like, the guy has never said his mind. So you look like a, a love hungry jack. The guy didn't even say hi to you. You're falling in love 24 times. You know, you taste the guy, this, this, this. So you begin to suffocate the people that even show interest with too much love. And the reason why you do that, because you feel you're not enough. So you have to give so much. You have to give so much. And let me tell you something. There's also what is called too much love. Because like, it's suffocating. And when you, you give the impression that there's something wrong with you, that's why you're behaving that way. And most of the time, the guys or the ladies will begin to fall backwards. This is not a girl thing also. It's for guys. I know guys that, that they will just be doing so much. In fact, I, I met one lady that said, I said, why did you break up with him? He said, no, pastor, it's too much. It's too much. There's something wrong with this guy. He's sick somewhere. I said, why? He said, if I, if I get angry, he buys a present. If he comes late, he buys a cake. He's always trying to buy something, do something. He said, if those are money, he borrows. So the lady was smart enough to know that the guy has a behavior. He's trying to compensate for something. What he's trying to compensate for is that he doesn't think he's enough to have this lady. And it was the lady that, ah, oh, the best thing that happened in my life is I, I, I met you. Best thing that you said yes. So the lady felt as if there's something really wrong with you. But deep down is the fact that you think you are not enough and you are doing a lot of things to compensate. The second part of not being enough is that since you know you're not enough, you don't even try. You block your DM, you block Instagram. When you come to church, you're just like old mama, boo boo style. I can't come and kill myself. If you like me, like me. If you don't like me, don't like me. You know, what's there to like now? Yeah, beg, 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 beg. They say, uh, you say, uh, I'm fat. If I'm fat, and uh, won't I eat and kill you and do myself? If there's no man, won't I eat food? Let me just eat one time. Uh. Makeup, you know, makeup. Jerry, you know, wear jelly. You will not behave as this and this and that. You say, I, 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 I don't like me this way, you should leave me. <laughs> and at the root of that is that you feel you are not enough. Have you noticed the subject you didn't do well in secondary school? You didn't put a lot of effort. Because you predominantly thought you were weak. So because you feel as if you are weak when it comes to romance, love, and sexuality, you don't put effort there because your thinking is that no matter the effort I put, it will result to failure. 
And because you don't want to be heartbroken, you say, don't let me try again. You cannot disappoint a man that is disappointed. Which one are you? Moment of truth. Let me ask anybody, which one are you? Let me get two comments. Hands up. Two examples, two comments. Hands up. And this I'm not in love. Is even with rich men. There are rich men that cannot talk. It's money. 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 They don't have steals or game. Glory to God. Okay, let's get some experiences. Let's get some information. Mrs. Uh, will you share with us? She's one of our women leaders. Why are you not hiding behind the camera? You and your husband are there. I mean, you have a lot of story between the two of you. And people are canceling. You're canceling people. Yeah, yeah. Give it to her. Just on the left. The way your husband folded his hands, I said, don't give me the microphone, don't take it close to me. Give it to your husband first. Ah, don't mind him. Uh, give it to your husband. Uh, how are you? I'm very well, sir. What do you think about the teaching today? Um, it's very apt. I mean, something a lot of people may not like to hear, but they need to hear. So it's, I think it's a very important message. Thank you. Did any of your friends pass straight of these things? Any story when you were growing up, yeah? Um... Not directly, but I mean, I've heard of a lot of stories that are very similar. So I Which think. one? Uh, the aspect of especially a lot of women who meet somebody and they're afraid to break away from the person. Mm. So, you know, sometimes doing what's important is very hard. So you have to make a hard decision. Excellent. Let me give it to your wife. Pastor V. I love you. <laughs> I love you too. Okay, so Pastor B, yeah. I actually sent someone a message and I said, Pastor B, you... You already uh, sent someone a message, you see? I thought you should be tweeting and so that you'd be telling your friends and saying, if you're not watching, watch all. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I loved what I heard and I wish I had heard it younger. But aside from that, even as a married person, it still opens me up to understand that it's not my inefficiencies, actually, that's the that I should linger on, but how to make myself better. Is Excellent. Me. Excellent. Awesome. Okay, I want people to share these stories, how maybe someone is struggling with this, someone has overcome this, maybe it's you, maybe it's your neighbor, maybe it's your friend. How can we get this? Okay, let's go. Hands up. Where? Okay, thank you. Yeah. Celebrate you too. Um, you look wonderful. I like your earrings you. and your bold smile. Thank you very much. Um, this story is about my cousin. She's been dating some guy in the UK for years, donkey years. Five years or more? Like 10 years. 10 years. And um, she, she, she was 34 as of last year, or 35. And um, the guy had been promising that he was going to get married. Several failed promises. He would come to Nigeria, have a good time. Go back eventually she realized that he had already gotten married in the uk and has a whole family um so she's not my age so i was surprised when she called me sometime last year in tears talking to me and asking if i could introduce that to anyone even if it was a married friend she doesn't mind being the wife number two i felt very bad because she's such a wonderful person and i tried to console her and tell her not to give up hope but she was thinking where would she start from especially because of the biological clock so me, I'm very, I always tell people, you can meet people online. I believe in meeting people online, like you said. So I encouraged her to join Bumble. She didn't know what Bumble was. I asked her for her best pictures. She doesn't have any good pictures. I Instagram, she doesn't have pictures, nothing. Just like you were advising young girls to. Why does she not have pictures? She's, a mindset has already began to create a pattern of marital failure for her. Let me tell you something. Go and do a photo shoot. Praise God. Go and do what? A photo shoot. Yeah. Yeah.
Yeah. So, like you advised, I always advise my friends to, to do a rebranding. There's nothing. I'll, I'll tell you what I, I would add to what you're saying. Before I tell them to do photo shoot, I will change their mindset. You know why? The root of every actions come from mindset and, and emotions. Once the mindset and emotion is not right, it doesn't matter what they do on the outside, it will collapse. Because a sick heart will produce sick things. Praise God. I said praise God. Okay, let me get another comment, another comment, another story, personal story. Thank you. Over here, there's someone over here. If this, is your web, if this is your first time in Harvesters, welcome to Harvesters. Where we change lives. Yeah. Good you can also ask a question, actually. Yeah. Good afternoon, Pastor B. Good afternoon. What's your name? My name is Esther. Okay. So, just this time last year, I came to Harvester for the first time. Okay. Emotionally broken. You know, I think I was sitting over there and I asked a question. When I went home, I was tearing apart. I was really crying. But today, I can say that those preachings and the ones I've been hearing over and over again, and sometimes when I miss church because of the nature of my business, I stream online and all of that. And because I also join a small group, I have leaders over my head. I can say that I'm not the same person wow. that I used to be. Oh. Emotionally, I am intelligent emotional wise. Amen. I know what I want. Wow. I can have fleets of them and select and filter and say, this is the person. You are not fit for me. Just like I was talking to somebody a few months ago and the person made a comment. He said, they are just deceiving you people in that church. I didn't say a word. I just blocked immediately. And there's some other person telling me that they don't believe in tight. I block again. You know why? Because I know exactly what I want. I'm aware of what I want. So the preachings are not just for us to hear and smile and laugh about They've it. They've changed your own life. They have changed my life. Praise and I'm God. grateful to God. That's very touching. <clears throat> That's very touching. So what's the first mistake? Number one. What? What? Yeah, your beauty is all you have. So Instead of saying your beauty is all you have, can we begin to develop other areas of our lives? You can develop other areas. Can you develop your communication, your friendliness? You can develop other areas of your life as a lady. Develop your communication, your friendliness. What's the second point? What? I'm not enough. I'm not enough. And that's why sometimes, you know, there's someone that I know, more like family, he said, Pastor B, I know that you will not give me money if I ask you, Sharp, but I will still ask you. I said, okay, what? I said, what is it? He said, ah. He said, I want to go and do BBL. And I said, why do you want to do BBL? He said, why do you think I'm single? He said, because I'm big now. Big stomach, big everything. That's why. He said, but if my body just turned this body. Ha! He said, Pastor B, I will return your money with interest. He said, just three to six months, let me just finish healing from the BBL. Of course, I didn't give her. <laughs> but she got the money somewhere and did the BBL. This is the second year. I asked her. I said, excuse me. Husband, you don't have. Broke, you are more broke. The reason why is that once you think you are not enough, you will keep taking steps that you will think will bring you solution they will just amplify your insecurities. Because insecurities cannot be solved by external things. Insecurities is first solved what internally. Let me be, let's be more open. Some of you just think, personally, you are not beautiful. You just think you are too dark. You are too tall. You are too light. You are too brown. Your teeth is scattered. Your breast is small. Your bum bum is too big. Your bum... It, have you not noticed that there's nobody that is perfect? But what I know is this. The way you are, you are so on spec. And the first thing you have to do is to believe that what you are enough. Blind people, married people, how do they see them? 
So the first thing is to, and I'm saying so because how did you come to the point where you feel as if you're not enough? It's a lot of, one of the things that makes complete not enough is a lot of criticisms primarily from your family members, your dad, your mom, your siblings. If they keep criticizing you, dark, dark, black boy, black boy, white boy, small bum, small girl, small bum girl, as you grow, what happens is that those, they will think they are joking with you, but eventually those things will create an inferiority complex in you. Now that you are older, reparent yourself. And if there's something you want to do about yourself you don't like, go ahead and do it. If you want to lose weight, go ahead and lose weight. I lost a lot of weight. I don't know if you've seen my pictures before. You know, but you know, the truth is that, you know, I, I lost, I mean, last three, four, five years, I've lost about 20 kg. I was really, really big. My, my, my trouser size was about 44. Now I weigh 34. But I'm doing it for me. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's take one more comment and I'll leave the last comment and we'll close. One more comment. Who has a question? Who has... Uh, hold on, hold on. I will tell you what I want now. Who has a question? Something that is troubling you. Your heart is heavy. You're going through all of that. Who has that kind of conversation now? Anybody? You do. Okay. Does she have that or that something now? She does. Okay, I will take half first and I'll take the person last. Yeah. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. Um, so my question is um, from an experience. Uh, so there's this guy that I'm seeing. I don't know if I'm seeing him or he's seeing me, but I know there's seen <laughs> happening. What, what does and, that mean? Um, what does seeing mean? Are you guys dating? That's the thing. Okay. Um, so I don't know if we're dating. And you I don't know if you're dating. Yes. Or you're not dating. <laughs> it's called as it's called you know situationship. Okay. Okay. Yes. That's it. But um, so there are actually prospects that it could actually become something permanent. Okay. But um, this person is a whole lot more focused on trying to um, uh, yeah, make money. Yes, thank you. And um, it's all coming from the point of view that his parents were struggling. Like his parents got, uh, they had to depart, like pull apart because they were pretty young and there was no funds and all of that. So he's trying to not... Um, do the same thing. He's trying to break How from is that, that connected to you? I want something serious. I, I want yeah. something defined. At least even not like, I'm not saying take me down the aisle tomorrow, but I want to know that this is where we stand. And it's like I'm asking him to make promises because he, he keeps on saying... What is the promise you're asking him to make? Exactly what I ask him. I, I'm not asking you to make me promises. Just define But he wants thing. to get intimate with you. Yes, he does. Oh, that's fine. So that's perfect. I... I, I want it sounds to... like what really happens everywhere with human beings. There's nothing you said that is not new. Definitely. Yeah. Guys don't want to define, but want to be intimate. Eh? So, you know the answer. Yeah. The, the only reason why you are there is because you are enjoying it. Yeah. Sorry. The reason I'm saying so is that, of course, not that literally you're enjoying it. What I mean to say is this. Logically, you know the answer. Because it could make that money now and say you're not the person that can fit his money. The question is that you're not pressuring him, but why can't you define, how does defining what we have debar you, hinder you, limit you from what? From making money. They're not connected. What The two things you said, literally not connected. He's the one connecting it to manipulate you. And he, you are holding on to him because he meets certain things in your life. It can be emotional. Or your fear is keeping you away from stepping out. Yeah. And the problem with fear is that the longer you stay there, the longer you stay there. You didn't get it. The longer you stay there, the longer you stay there. The longer you stay there, the more difficult it will be for you to leave. The longer you stay in a place where fear holds you back, in a place where you are afraid, the more difficult it will be for you to leave. All right. Okay. The lady over there. Why are you crying? Are you okay? The lady in yellow. Are you okay? 
Are you okay? Are you crying or your eyes are just red? What did she say? She's crying. She's crying. Why are you crying? Okay, just a minute. Yeah, tell me. Yeah, I can't see you, but I'll look at you on the screen. Can you make capture that person so I can see the person? Can you make capture? Yeah. Yeah. Funny enough, today when I was coming to church, I I have plans of meeting you after to talk to you because my problem is not it's not really about relationships. It's, I feel like uh, bad things are happening to me spontaneously. I don't know. Last week when I went out, on my way back I lost my phone. Like I don't know, it was an Uber. So when I called the Uber the next day, he said he never saw it. It happened on Friday. Saturday I was sad or true, but I decided to come to church. And when I came to church on Sunday, you were specifically talking about people not feeling what, unfortunate. What's when, your question? My question is, I feel like at this point I'm almost losing it because I lost the phone, raised money to get another one, and I was still scammed, just like yesterday. And I was today I didn't want to come to church. I just, so why were you scammed? I, like, I gave the money to the wrong people. The person I thought I was buying the phone for. Why didn't you buy, give the money to the person that has the phone? Hmm? Someone sells phones. Why didn't you give the money to the seller of the phone? So, I don't know what came over me, but I decided to just buy it online. To pay for the oh, phone to buy it online? Yes. Okay. You, okay. Oh, you bought it online. Okay. Yeah. So when I paid for the phone, and they were supposed to deliver the phone to me yesterday... But I called and then I noticed that I was blocked. Oh, I see. So those two things makes you feel that you're unfortunate. <laughs> so, um, uh, let me tell you something. Where did you get the money to buy the phone? The money that I've been keeping arrested. You are uh, blessed that you even have savings. <laughs> you know why I'm saying this to you? A lot of people here, if they lose their phone, that's it all. It will take another one, two, or three months to be able to accumulate together. The reason why you feel unhappy is this. I'll tell you why you feel unhappy. Strategically, you are focusing on what is going wrong in your life. You are not focusing on what is going right in your life. What is going right is that, wow, ah, I lost the phone and I could afford to even use my savings to buy another one. Some people don't even have savings to buy another phone. I don't think there's something going wrong in your life. I think that what is happening to you is that you are asking the wrong question that is affecting your focus. Your focus, what's your first question? You say, why are things going wrong with my life? That's the question. Every time you ask that question, you'll be depressed because the question has a negative undertone. Why are things going wrong in my life? Let me tell you the right question. What is this teaching me? Answer. Nothing. Tell me, if it's nothing, just say nothing. I think it's teaching me that I just have to be strong. I don't know. You don't know. You know why she doesn't know? Because she's not able to process this positively. So she can't say this. I'll tell you what it teaches you. Number one, be more careful with your phone in public places. Number two, don't buy things online from vendors you have not verified. Never. Yeah. You see now, it has taught you something. Because thank God that it was the money for phone you lost. Hey, what about if it's your work money? You lost 10 million. So there's something that... And the moment you say, what is it teaching you? Why are you smiling? The only reason why you're smiling is because all of a sudden, what is it teaching me is a positive... Why are we not getting a video of her? What, excuse me. Can you pick up a video of her? Okay. I can't see it on the screen. It's from the... No, I can get... Okay. So... The moment I said, what is it? why did you laugh? The reason why you laughed is because it triggered possible emotions in your mind. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The third mistake that single ladies make is that they think all their connections will come from physical spaces. All their connections will come from what? Physical spaces. There are more people online that you will meet online than you will meet physically. Every day, people that interact with me online, maybe out of about 50, 100, or 200,000. How many people do I meet physically every day? Maybe, apart from Sundays, maybe 25, 30, 50 people. So what does that do? P 
position yourself well online. Runs girls know these secrets. Only born and girls don't know these secrets. Position yourself well online. How do you position yourself online? Have good, have a page that is vibrant. Have a page that looks as attractive as you are. Number two, learn to comment on page. Wow. And when you comment, hope you know your comment shows your intelligence. So don't just go and just put face and hand. It doesn't say anything. When I post pictures, don't just put hand and face. No, write something. Oh, service today was very inspiring. You know, as a single lady, as a single lady, I learned that I should keep my hustle going. You know, you know, I should keep my hustle. You know. If by the time you write that, someone is going to the comment and say, ah, which one is single lady? Enter. Ah, but the girl is not bad though. And she's even a Christian because the girl is commenting on my post. Praise God. I said, praise God. I said, praise God. So I want us to be careful as we close this, this afternoon. I want us to be very careful of the emotional state we put ourselves in. Just the emotional state we put ourselves in. And the reason why is that your mindset and your emotions will determine what? Your attraction. Once you feel that you're not good enough, you will feel as if some people are too much for you. A lady once told me this, that a guy was going on to her, but she said to herself, there's no way this kind of guy can like me. He wants to cheat me. And it's a definition of what she thinks she is. Church people, you know, and church people, we have religion problem. I understand that. But can we choose to know the emotions and this? Let me also say something there. If you have been heartbroken, whoever broke your heart has gone. I said this in the other service and I'll say it this way. Unforgiveness and resentment is drinking poison, hoping that your, your enemy dies. You are the one that will buy. That is what unforgiveness does. You allow negative things and poison circulate your system. Totally circulate your system, hoping to affect your enemy. It will not affect them one bit. Someone say hallelujah. Uh, so you, you, need to, you need to learn the right things. Hallelujah. I want us to pray. I don't want, to, I, I don't want it to let, you know, it's, it can get very long, this fourth service, but um, we'll continue. Amen? We'll continue. Amen. Can we pray? Yeah, can we pray? Have you learned a lot today? Can you stand on your feet? Let's pray.